glorious sight indeed to see so many of you. It says in Psalm 16, verse 3, that uh, the saints who are in the land, they are the excellent ones. And I think you guys are the excellent ones in the land that come together. Some kind of great feeling that they will come together and share. Uh, just a bit of sight, my interest, my family name is Yap, so we call me Kim Ming. And I have four children. And over the years, we have been growing up, they become known as Yapis. So I have four children who are Yapis. And so that become quite a lot. And we put a lot of chances that we deserve us over the years. And uh, that's a pretty privilege to be here today. My smile is, on Corinthians 15, 15, your labor is not in vain. I want to assure every one of us, because 1 Corinthians 15, I should talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ didn't rise from the dead, then all that we are doing is in vain. We are wasting our time. If you read the whole chapter, we are being fooled and deluded. But if Jesus did rise from the dead, then all that we do makes sense. So especially all the all, whole lot of you here are blessing in time and helping other people to grow. It's not in vain. It's important for us to recognize that Jesus' death and resurrection make all the difference for us. Two days ago, I went to visit Nansukim. Nansukim is one of our veteran uh, navigator staff, our first missionary to Japan. And he's 73 and he's actually in cancer because he has stage uh, yes, uh, in hospital because he has stage 4 cancer. I must confess, I don't want to see Sukim because I want to say to someone who says that uh, many people think it's a stage 4 is end cancer stage, so your life will be very long. So I literally dragged my feet over to see Sukim. I mean, I didn't have gone. I Okay, I don't know. I wonder if this, I went one time and then he wasn't there. He was uh, out of the hospital because he was hanging up today. But then eventually I thought I need to see him. And so I went to see him and the first thing he said to me, I had to bend down to see him because he was going very low. He said, I don't know you. You were at the Bible study at 5 a.m. in the morning with Patrick Tan. I said, wow, okay, those were the early days when I was a young convert. And I showed up at the Bible study at 5 a.m. He remembered me. So I said, oh, that's good. <laughs> so if you show up at 5am for Bible study, remember your leader will remember you. It's all wrong later. If you don't come up, then you will remember you. Anyway, uh, we shared, we chatted, and had a good time with him. I was so glad I went to see him. And then he asked me, what do you you? Bring me. I know right now I'm an age 4 cancer, but I believe that God will give me more life. Can you pray that God will give me an age 85? I said, you're 73, you're stage 4 cancer, you have another 12 years. Well, okay, la, and I pray for you, but I wasn't sure. But as I began to pray for him, I thought to myself, who is to stop us from saying that God cannot answer that prayer, cannot heal him, and cannot help him to live on age 85? In fact, what was interesting is that uh, I'll show another couple of us later on, but a few months ago, a couple of friends flew back all the way from, one of them came from, from Joe China, they flew back to see him, because they heard that Sukim was not well and he did for cancer. So this guy is called Timothy, and some of us know him as Lukui. He's our guy who's leading the work. So Luke Wei and another friend flew all the way back to see Sukim and said, Sukim, remember us? You led me to Christ. And he even cited the Billy Graham to say that. And then he followed me up and he discipled me. You know, everybody that I lead to Christ which have a share in the one. So I'm just saying that for Sukim, it's like, sure, you, you, you're at this stage, you're 73, you've served the Lord. Maybe the Lord may call you home tomorrow, I don't know. But you can pray. You live in age 85. But meanwhile, all the time you spend investing in someone like you with the other guy is always the labor of your I want to share you two verses from uh, Psalms 139, 17, and Psalms 17. And uh, over time I found that I, I like the Psalms a lot, so I copy them every day, one Psalm a day. And Psalm 139 was special because I was copying it, this thought came. Psalm 139, verse 17. It says, How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is some of them? That's great. That's very nice. Then verse 18. If I could count them, they are more than sand. That's true. That is the last part that caught my mind. I've been awake and I'm still with you. I don't know about you, I go to sleep every night and I wake next morning. One of these days when I awake, I will not be on this side of the earth. I'll be awake and I'll be on the other side of the earth. I'll be in heaven. And the part that I like to bear is I will wake and I'm still with you. When I wake up for whatever time frame, no one can say when. I'll be with Jesus. And then associating with that, I was talking about how precious is God's word. So I thought to myself, every verse I memorize, every Bible study I do, every devotion I've done will not be wasted. I still remember 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 8, 1, 1, 5, 11. This is the very first verse I memorized as a young Christian. My salvation and so on so forth. Those verses are still very valid. I'm an old boy of Singapore Poly. In those days, I studied mechanical engineering. They taught me about valve. 
But today, the valve that's so huge become like a transistor in terms of change of technology. So everything I learned about valve is useless. Now it's all technology in terms of transistors. And nothing as far as the word of God is concerned is wasted. Every time I spend some time with somebody praying, invest, investing my life with somebody, it's not wasted. Our labor is not in vain. So I share this with uh, Sukim, and then there's one more word that I like in verse uh, Psalm 17. It says in Psalm 17, verse 15, As for me, I shall behold your face with righteousness. This is the part of it again. When I'm awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. He said, you must be here talking about being awake. I don't know what will happen when I will sleep tonight, whether I wake up in tomorrow morning, I will not be around. But it just assure me that I'm awake. I shall behold my face with righteousness. I shall behold him because I'm so familiar with him. And every time the Bible is concerned, nothing is wasted. So those guys have struggled with their memory and so on and so forth. Nothing in the Bible is wasted. It's going to be on forever and ever. Everything else we learn, we all take it by technology and so on and so forth. So the time spent in people's life, time spent in scripture is not wasted. I want to commend you guys for being around because it's a joy to see you. Keep on laboring. Our labor is not in vain and we're going to use us to bless many more people. Thank you. Lord, we just want to praise you and thank you for what you've done for us. That we have known Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. We know for a fact that He died for our sins. He was buried, He rose again on the third day. We remember in 1 Corinthians 15 28, that indeed, because of that, our labor is not in vain. We serve a risen Christ. So today, as we spend time, Lord, here, listening to one another, how you bless us in terms of the word, how can we encourage to focus on the call? Because so important to all of us. Lord, we will learn something afresh. Help us to believe that you will speak to us. You will show up. You will be in our midst as we listen to you. Amen. I'll tell to you. Ask for your blessings. In Jesus' name. Amen.